In line with the modern and thorough training program consistent throughout our Army, the Airborne Command at Fort Bragg has constructed these dummy transport plane fuselages. Identical in size, shape, and angle of incline to the real planes, these soldiers of the Airborne Infantry are practicing to load with heavy cargo. These loading procedures have been inaugurated into the regular training schedules, and they mark a significant part of airborne training. Air-minded military men are looking forward to greatly increased transportation of equipment, as well as men, by air. And this practice in loading the planes on a mock-up platform, which is capable of sustaining even a jeep, is going to make the speedy loading of real planes in the future a great deal more effective. A 75 millimeter howitzer is not a light or simple piece of mechanism to load. It's delicate and complicated. Get into the plane it goes, handled carefully and knowingly by the trained crew. It's of vital importance for the men to know how to get the equipment in and out of the plane quickly. Now real, full-sized planes, big DC-3 transports taxiing into line to be speedily loaded. First, the doors are taken off so that the runways for the wheeled equipment can be securely fastened to the plane's floor and made ready for the loading operations. The narrow fuselage in airliners this size would seat only 21 persons. But it's a cargo plane now, capable of carrying jeeps, light artillery pieces, motorcycles, and other pieces of infantry equipment, as well as the personnel to unload them. Rough weather aloft would mean danger to the heavily laden plane if all equipment were not tightly lashed, which must be done to every piece. There go the motorcycles, more easily maneuvered up the runway than the heavier vehicles and artillery pieces. And they're stowed tightly together in the plane's hold, securely lashed. Up with the runways, and then the men, equipped with full packs for field duty. Some of them into planes for personnel only and some into the loaded transports, ready to go. This equipment and these men might be going to the battlefields where reinforcements and supplies are greatly needed. They might be going from one theater of operations to another, transported over enemy territory, or to a point behind the enemy lines where parachutists have already cleared an area for the landing of airborne personnel. But this is training now, training to perfect technique, to make the real jobs of tomorrow easier and better. <laughs> Running, jumping, rough and ready soldiers of our Army's commando-like rangers rush through an obstacle course designed for real toughness. It's speed that counts. Swift, lightning-like bayonet work to wreak destruction on the enemy in a charge or to disarm his counter-thrusts. Then on, dodging in and out of hazards, keeping muscles limber. Watch them go! Another course, and full packs this time, but no slackening of pace for these tough U.S. troops. The kind of training that makes men soldiers, and the kind of soldiers who win their fights. The biggest high explosive artillery shells can't hold a candle to this massive weapon of the air. A one ton bomb which testing engineers at Aberdeen are going to use for blasting at imaginary enemy installations on the ground below. 
2,000 pounds of high explosives is a heavy load, and getting the big missile into the bomb bay isn't easy. The utmost care and precision is necessary for these one-tonners. And there's the famous U.S. bomb site being handed to the bombardier. Loaded and ready to climb to 10,000 feet. From that altitude, the pilot of the B-23 bomber will release his deadly load. Ten thousand feet, and there she goes. That's the way these big one-tonners look when an Allied raid pours blockbusters down on the Germans and the Japs. And here goes another, this time winging down toward Chesapeake Bay. A house or building in the way of that just wouldn't be when the smoke cleared. That crater is over 50 feet wide, and giant fragments of the bomb have flown for many hundred yards. That's the kind of demolition that counts. New recruits. A small detachment of the 125,000 dogs ordered by the Quartermaster General for rigorous training in connection with MP sentry work the world over. They're using purebred Doberman, Shepherds, Dalmatians, Setters, Collies, Airedales, even Poodles and Great Danes. And each dog is carefully selected by experienced trainers for boldness and aggressiveness as watchdogs. Fierce enough and tough enough to hold a man at bay until human help arrives. The training's all important, and stress is laid on perfect and immediate obedience, vital to the dog's success as an aid to MP sentries. And that comes with endless practice, training the dogs always to heal, closely following his trainer, learning every gesture and voice inflection, until he no longer needs the short choke chain collar in use here. Each sentry dog must immediately learn not to get excited by the presence of another dog, the untrained dog's greatest failing. And so they're trained to walk through a group of dogs, paying attention only to the soldier trainer. Only one trainer is assigned to each dog throughout the entire basic training period to avoid development of too much friendliness in these canine sentries. The trainer treats his dog in a businesslike and impersonal way, except to pet and praise him for doing as he's told. Retrieving the rubber bone and returning it to his master is serious work, not play, for it trains the big shepherd in single-mindedness and obedience. It keeps him alert. Basic training over, the dogs are off to their posts and special carriers, off to specific training in actual sentry work, learning to sense and discover the presence of suspicious persons out of sight or earshot of their MP master to attack when ordered and keep a culprit at bay, to grab a trigger arm if there's a gun, to follow a spore into high brush. Watch. An MP and his sentry dog walking their post, alert but unsuspecting of a hidden character who does not hear them coming. Go get him, King. Get that trigger arm. Hold tight. The MP's gun has him now, King. Your job is just to stop him. Hold him at bay. Let the MP do the rest. Tomorrow, another staged culprit for the dog to catch, perhaps with a club to teach the dog to dodge. 
And after that, training in nighttime, when dogs are doubly valuable in scouting out intruders. And maybe for the bigger dogs, training in pack or Red Cross work as well. A rounded, thorough program to make the dogs an efficient, valuable aid in modern warfare. Thank you.